Whatever our personal tastes, we've all sung, danced, or tapped along to our favorite tunes. We've probably never stopped to think what we're doing. Well, what we're doing really is just following a pattern, a rhythm, the beat of the music. Now for us, most of us, music is just something that goes on in the background. That's why I can never remember lyrics. But for others, it's really important. And I'm off to meet Alan Graham, an OU academic. He's from the maths and computing department, but he's also absolutely passionate about music. So, where do you find Alan when he's not at work? Well, how about in here? That was a tune called Not the Guy, okay. and that was a jig. Right. So what's an OU mathematician like you doing in a place like this? Well, uh, we play here quite a lot. We have regular gigs here. We play Irish music and people seem to like it. Now you find there are links, don't you, between the maths and the music you play? Yes, I do. Uh, sometimes the maths helps the music, sometimes the music helps the maths. Just a, an example of that, the, the music that you hear comes in through your ears and it's enjoyable, but if you really want to analyse it as a musician, there's nothing to get your hands on. You need to find a way of representing it on paper, and that's where the maths comes in. So that's what we're going to try and do now, isn't it, to analyse your music. What, what type's this? That's right, well this is a jig, and uh, a jig is based on a simple structure of six notes, and it goes one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. I found it helpful when I was first learning to call Pineapple, leprechaun, pineapple, leprechaun, pineapple, leprechaun, pineapple, leprechaun. That's clever. And now, everybody, we're going to play uh, a very lively reel called Morning Dew. So what makes this a reel, then? A reel is a different sort of rhythm. This time there are four beats in every bar, and it goes one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Well, that's great. Do you want to go back and join them? Yeah, we'll do. going to be next? Well, I think we'll uh, slow the pace down a bit and perhaps play something that you might recognise. Okay, go for it. Guess this one. It goes one, two, three. One, two. So is it a waltz? That's right, it's a waltz. Yeah. <laughs> I can get something right. <laughs> so, this, as you say, three beats in the bar mm. with the stress on the first beat. Uh, right, I play 
play the fiddle or violin. Uh, it's got four strings. Uh, the lowest is the G string and the highest is the E string. Um, there's more tension on the E string, that's why it's higher in pitch. Uh, to make a note, I use a bow, which is made from wood and horse hair, and it creates friction on the string. And in order to change the pitch of the, the note as I play, I put down my fingers on the fingerboard like this. Which makes the string shorter and it vibrates faster, so right. the note's higher. So your, no your fingers control the way it vibrates, don't you? Yes, and if I demonstrate, I can also demonstrate with one finger how I can shorten the string, like this. <laughs> Great. And what about your instrument? This is an Irish drum called a baran, and it has a wooden frame, and this is goat skin, which is pulled taut across it. Um, and what you do, of course, as with any drum, is you hit it, and the skin, it, it's flexible, so it moves. With this drum, you play it by putting your hand actually on the skin at the back. Now, if my hand's on there and I hit it, it's quite a high pitch. And that's because I'm stopping some of the vibrating and also I'm lessening the area of the drum that's being hit. So when my hand's on it, it's quite a high pitch. When my hand's off it, it has a lower pitch. So you can actually change the pitch of a drum. It's depending right. where your hand is. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So again, it's all vibrations. Yes. Notes. Yes. Great. Well, I'll leave you to get a bit of a rest. Okay. <laughs> Hi there. Hi. Tell me about the whistle. Well, you blow through this end and the note is produced by the vibration of the column of air. If I cover all the holes, it's the complete column of air that vi vibrates. And as I take my fingers off one at a time, I'm reducing the size of the column of air, and the shorter the column of air, the faster the vibrations, and the higher the notes. I just do that, you can hear the notes increase in pitch.